Hello, listeners and viewers. Um, today, inspired with the International Children's Day, we have topic um, mobile kids and programming uh, on our episode nine. Uh, our special guest is Alexander Dmitrenko, uh, mom and uh, lead trainer at uh, IPAM e Kids program. Uh, hello, Alexandra. Uh, can you Hi. tell a few words about yourself? Um, nice to meet you guys. Uh, <laughs> I I work as a trainer um, at uh, Pump Kids for already four years, I guess even more. And uh, several last years, me and another guy are co train co lead trainers. We train other trainers to do how how to teach kids. Um, and also we lead uh, different groups. Um, there are several kinds of groups, like uh, the beginners and uh, the ones who are more advanced. Also, we divide kids by the age. Um, the smallest kids who can come to us are around seven years old. And uh, the, the oldest kids which we accept are 16. So we have like uh, three levels, uh, but actually like, uh, I mean like seven, uh, 10 or seven, nine years and 10, 12 years and older ones. Also, when we have really lots of kids, we can make uh, more serious gradations, I mean, more, more deep ones. Um, this program is uh, working for internal kids at the POM, but since uh, a previous year, we started also accepting kids from uh, families with uh, like hard conditions, uh, hard life conditions. For example, uh, those who moved from areas uh, affected by war um, and uh, uh, those who have troubles with parents. Um, but we don't have much resources to accept all the kids. Uh, still, we hope uh, this is our future and maybe we shall make this program uh, valid for all the kids who would like to attend. Okay, thank you. Uh, we we will talk a little bit more about the program itself and uh, specifically the uh, idea of how to teach uh, kids uh, programming. But I think before that, let's let's cover the topic more broadly. I mean, we, we we're trying to discuss here uh, the connection between kids and the mobile devices. And uh, since we're like focusing on Apple, we probably might have some specifics on Apple platforms, but we're talking generally here. And this question probably will be to all of us here. I mean, the basically, how do you think, when is the time to allow uh, your kids, infant or I don't know, to like play games or like use your mobile phone or an, or an iPad for the first time? We are not talking like owning it, but rather like when when it's time to just allow touching the screens and uh, everything. Yes, uh, this question interests lots of parents. Uh, one of the main reasons is because uh, when parents want kids to stay still, they give a mobile phone to their kids and turn on any kind of movies because they just need some calm time. Um, that, but, that helps. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but I would advise you not to use it often, especially if your kid is uh, under two years. Uh, because um, eye doctors uh, would advise uh, not to start seeing screens or very close objects next to your eyes uh, till two. Especially if parents have troubles with eyes uh, <clears throat> and, put, and wear glasses, uh, it's advised to postpone this period even two, three years, if that is possible, for sure. Like the, le the less um, screen, the better. Um, but uh, for sure, you have to develop your kid, and uh, there are lots of applications created for, for little ones, so I guess uh, it's about balancing when it's right, right to start. <clears throat> Irina, what do you think? Uh, so, uh, uh, I don't uh, know exactly because I'm not a doctor, but uh, I've read some articles that um, sometimes, so it could be harmful not for only for eyes for children, but for their nervous system 
to uh, see all these uh, little moving things uh, and to like uh, uh, adopt it and to read uh, uh, it. Uh, uh, of course, it helps to develop, but uh, it should be some limit. Uh, but what's the limit? Uh, I don't know. You're absolutely right. Uh, the limit is 15 minutes. Uh, I was told that it's better not to overuse uh, phone more than 15 minutes. Besides, recently I have read an article about also teaching kids uh, <clears throat> to play with uh, those devices. And uh, doctor, uh, a scientist made uh, uh, a research and found out that if adult parent or anybody watches uh, a movie with his little kid and comments what's going on in the movie, then it will help to develop the kid. But if the kid watches the movie by himself, it doesn't make an effect or even makes uh, makes it worse uh, because kid won't spend uh, time effectively playing with his uh, toys, which also might develop him like moving car or anything. But uh, just still uh, sitting still and watching the movie uh, for a relatively long time will develop uh, will affect negatively on development of the brain. So if you want uh, your kid to develop, then stay with the kid and watch more with him. <laughs> I'm just out of curiosity. Do you think that, well, we hear a lot that like uh, computer games and mobile games are not the same at, as like gaming in, I don't know, in the sandbox or outside or like with other kids. Do you think there is something good in mobile games? I mean, not just watching the cartoons or movies, but rather like, do these games actually help to develop something i know i don't know reaction or like matching patterns or something yes uh, we also can see it um, on uh, some researches uh, made by doctors uh, regarding partially disabled or disabled people you know that um, when people are old uh, they might have troubles uh, with moving and uh, playing games, uh, computer games, uh, by <coughs> even mm, light moving of uh, um, like some device or mouse or anything, uh, that provokes person to make uh, an uh, even little movement can influence his brain also uh, and stimulate him for for the development or recovery. So playing games uh, is uh, maybe very good. Uh, depends on the game and depends on the amount, how much you play and <laughs> what you play. <laughs> so the balance again. <laughs> um, and do you think that there is an age when you um, when you can like basically give your um, uh, your kid his own personal phone? Is it something like when he starts going to school or? earlier or maybe later? Uh, uh, this question is tough <clears throat> because mm, it also dep um, depends on the way family wants to <clears throat> sorry, uh, wants to organize the money question inside because phone usually is something expensive and uh, right. given your child a phone is uh, given some responsibility and a uh, child should be ready not to play football with his phone um, and uh, like to use it as a <clears throat> as it is devoted to uh, and also not to overuse it with um, with his friends or probably he might uh, message someone or he might uh, use um, <clears throat> a phone to access internet sites which are not allowed so this all should be discussed and when those questions are solved and uh, <coughs> parents can trust to their kid uh, then i guess this is the moment when you can give it it's different for any kid uh, for, for every kid for every family so it depends right right Okay, so it's a very good answer. <laughs> I, uh, maybe I, I didn't think about uh, 
uh, all this uh, stuff before. So I have a kid under age. <laughs> uh, it's too early, but um, uh, nice points uh, to have for me in future. And uh, okay, so uh, now the uh, 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 child has uh, his own device, or maybe uh, you gave uh, him uh, to play uh, some game on it your own. And uh, how do you think what should uh, be restrictions for applications that children use? Uh, are they enough in current stores, in Apple Store or Google Play, like advertisement? Uh, I can tell you from my experience, uh, when I start playing some games, and uh, to be honest, I, I do it sometimes, um, I, the advertisements which I would normally meet, uh, come across, would be about hungry kids in South Africa, or about um, sickness uh, that uh, someone has, or about how to get smarter. Uh, so I believe um, Apple somehow manages it, and he like uh, the the company understands that if uh, this application is is made for kids, if this is like light game, uh, which I would usually play. Uh, then they would have to control the advertisements. So for now, from what I have noticed, it's fine. But um, I don't know if there are some restrictions inside of the company and who really manages it. I know there is an ID that uh, tells uh, the data of the person uh, to the advertisement company to which uh, the data is sold. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, this data should contain the age restrictions, etc. And uh, it is punished by government if advertisement company uh, would give wrong uh, stuff. But it works in the United States. Uh, I hope it works in uh, post Soviet Union countries also. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, ju just a sec. You, you well. Apple definitely imposes some restrictions on the kids category and specifically it's the tracking and advertisements. So they basically focus on that the tracking should not be present in <laughs> kids apps so you cannot track uh, kids actions uh, and uh, you typically shouldn't sh should not show the third party advertisement. The, but well, there are some cases when you basically can show that but uh, the Apple typically restricts the advertisement, so the, all the ads you're showing should be of the same uh, age as the app itself uh, targeted for and everything else. So they're trying to do that, but yeah, what, what troubles me about the, uh, this particular apps category is basically the pricing model. So if you look into any app store or uh, Google Play, you will see that there are a lot of apps targeting for kids. The games, uh, maybe some uh, content apps like, uh, I don't know, cartoons, collections or everything, but they're so expensive. I mean, if you compare the app for kid, which like allows you to study math, for example, like adding one plus one and uh, like with normal graphics, there is nothing fancy there. And you will like compare that to real calculator app, which is, I don't know, like PCALC or whatever, which is fully featured application, which like, I don't know, the like, team works hard to make it perfect <laughs> that particular kids apps will cost more and i think the problem here is basically it's target well it's parents who are paying for these apps and parents typically are less uh less concerned about the money when it's about the, their kids so if you do do something for your kids you're like okay it costs 10 bucks no problem with that i i, I can live with this and it's for my kid for example and it moreover it's not just a game but it's rather like uh it has some yeah it's like it helps in development and uh, no, no problem with that and i don't know that do you see that uh, did you ever like looked into kids apps or yes yes <clears throat> and <clears throat> sorry it's uh, also not only about the kids. Um, I sometimes come across uh, some toys for pets. Uh, I have a dog. And um, I see the same toy for the kids. 
And I don't understand why duck for the dog costs uh, twice more than duck for a kid. <laughs> <laughs> What's the reason? Maybe duck for well, a dog. Should be. <laughs> yeah, like uh, as if rubber would be different. <laughs> Maybe this is the case, but uh, it doesn't uh, seem like that from the first look. Um, yeah. And uh, you're absolutely right. Sometimes I also see the stuff for the kids and I'm sorry to spend so much money for that. Uh, but uh, there are some free uh, applications. I came across those who, which cost uh, around five bucks. Uh, I, I looked for the ones who are for programming and some simple ones are five bucks. So you can allow that. Mm, but uh, yeah. still, I would uh, go with the free ones because uh, for now, uh, uh, I think it's enough. Like, I, I use only the free ones, and I like uh, using them, so I can advise you some. <laughs> sure, we probably add something to uh, to the show description later on. Um, and I think that yep. uh, uh, we, uh, it's maybe okay uh, to have a paid app, but uh, from my point of view, uh, applications for kids should be free of in-app purchases, like a uh, uh, kid is playing and someone's um, offering him to pay for something inside it. So uh, it's okay if parent pays for the app, but not like showing a child uh, in-app purchases. Right. Uh, I fully agree on that, and uh, sometimes in uh, this particular like um, window of like confirming the purchases, it could be like put in a way that the child might even accidentally tap something there, and if uh, there are no uh, restrictions set for the in-app purchases, uh, well, for example, like there is a setup allowing to uh, like confirm purchases without any confirmation from the like, I don't know, uh, touch ID or face ID or whatever uh, for some amount of time, then it could be like, basically, a kid could spend a lot of money for the short period of time. And uh, I would also add that the subscriptions probably is something which I'm, I have troubles on, again, specifically for the kids' apps. If parent gives the app to the kid and, like, kid uh, not just purchase something, but rather subscribes to something, parent might even not see that and like it will he will see that or she will see that later on when the bill uh, on the credit card comes up or uh, he will just basically when everything will be on charged and uh, you will have to spend some time looking for that subscription and how to cancel it and that's that troubles me and but the industry seems to be like not there are not too many apps which are like cheap enough and still nicely done. There are some apps which like do the good thing. And I think that's something we should encourage. And probably if you're like seeing, see, see the good apps and it's reasonably priced and it doesn't uh, use any dark patterns to make you pay more, well, probably. And if that app helps you like basically maybe buy it so the, like, the developers will have uh, intentions to continue doing this trend or instead of like doing bad apps with a lot of uh, hidden and app purchases. <laughs> so, there yes, should be I incentive to make good apps. Okay. Yeah, by the way, um, you asked me some time ago when it is good to play uh, games. Mm. I I can tell you uh, my story when I play games. Uh, I've noticed that when I stay stand in the line uh, waiting for, for my turn, I get very nervous. <laughs> I start watching uh, some people who want to also to to cheat and probably to be uh, to get the service uh, faster. And uh, especially when you have almost no time, you cannot help but just you get uh, st more and more stressed. So I noticed that my friend in such situations he starts uh, playing games. And I also downloaded some very simple game like uh, uh, trying to delete uh, the balls when there are three of the same color. Right. And uh, I started playing this game and it saved my nervous system. 
uh, I, I would recommend you to have some small games just for such situations when you're nervous or when you can't fall asleep because of uh, some thoughts. It just makes you think of different things and it relaxes you and you can sleep normally <laughs> if you have such troubles, for sure. Right. Um, I have one more question um, on the mobile devices. So we are talking about the phones typically, but it looks to me from one perspective that iPads or like tablets in general are better for kids uh, in, instead of like phones because like you have a larger screen it like easier to touch tap and uh, you shouldn't be putting it like close in close to your eyesight and therefore it seems that uh, the tablets are better in some way do you think like the like th this is the case or uh, or it's some problems I, here as well i i agree that uh, tablets uh, have bigger screen and it makes your eyes not so concentrated. So uh, your eye, like, you know, it is of uh, this form. And when you need to look on small objects, you would make it like this. But uh, when the image is big, you don't need to give more pressure. And that's why <clears throat> the larger the screen, the easier. But for sure, yeah, the screen should be not too large because when you cannot see the object, uh, when look at uh, one one glimpse, uh, then it is also not working good for for you. So um, some image of this kind of size, uh, around of tablet size, would be much better. Um, kids would uh, feel that they they are surrounded. By the way, I tried uh, using those boxes, mm, like, you know, the box which you would put on yourself, like the, the eye uh, glasses, uh, and put the phone inside. Uh, and uh, I downloaded some, um, <clears throat> some uh, I don't know, movies uh, where you can turn around and see the images. Uh, it's fun, but uh, I would use those more for the older ones because right. uh, kids would uh, believe uh, in the reality <laughs> much more than the adult would. Uh, even right. I um, believed. <laughs> I think yeah. that the um, tablets have one particular downside in this particular case. They are, uh, they wait more. So they are like, if, you're, if the tablet is just laying flat on the bed and uh, you're just tapping, uh, touching it from, uh, from the side, that's okay. But if you are holding it, and uh, the kid will probably easier to hold the phone rather than holding, uh, hold uh, like holding the big uh, tablet there. So that might be the case where uh, uh, tablets can have problem. I can like share my own problem with the pad, uh, with an iPad. I used to read. Uh, in the bed and like holding the uh, an iPad be before me and I like sometimes it slipped from the hands and just give me uh, heat on the nose that's not too fun actually <laughs> it's kind of heavy actually when it, when, when it gets in that case so uh, probably sorry like you. oh sorry sorry about you yeah yeah, well, th that that's okay. I'm, uh, but it's still like something. Yeah, you you reconsider and then like basically not read uh, lying flat, but rather maybe sitting or like change the pose so the iPad will not hit you again, and uh, you will will learn from our mistakes. But <laughs> but still, that's uh, something. Uh, so we, we, when you give your kid an iPad, you probably need to be sure that uh, the kid will not be uh, holding it above him just just in case, or above her. Have some rules, you can uh, use it only sitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely right. Uh, like, it's about sitting, uh, or it's good to, if the kid would lay on his belly and uh, start uh, reading or playing. Um, I would uh, do my lessons on the belly when I was a little one. Uh, even doctor advised me for uh, because it was good for my back. Um, so there are ways to, to, to find out the solution. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, 
Александра, uh, you already mentioned that uh, your uh, your kids program uh, starts for children uh, from seven years, and how do you think maybe uh, can children start to learn programming uh, uh, earlier? I have been interested in the scientific uh, point of view on this question, and um, I have found uh, old books. Uh, Uh, about um, the stages of uh, development uh, of the brain. And uh, it is written there that the uh, logical part of the brain starts developing from seven years old. Mm-hmm. And as uh, previously um, school started from seven, I I realized that probably this is the true reason. Like when your logic starts developing, you would go to school, which is a first step in your serious life. Um, and before that, it's fine if you go to the kindergarten, where your brain is not too much overloaded with different math or something. Mm-hmm. Still, uh, it is good to play chess or checkers or any other logical games like searching the path in, uh, in the maze um, before, before seven. And I know this situ- is the cases when um, kids, even girls, started programming from five and they were successful. Um, So I wouldn't advise to make a kid to, to push him, go to the classes to start program or even play robots, because it won't be that much of effect if the kid is younger than seven years old. And uh, if you want, I can share some more experience of mine. I've been uh, judging the kids' competition in Scratch uh, some time ago. And I've uh, noticed that the kids who were under 10 years old, they were not really performing good. Like the, uh, um, the way the competition was organized is um, that there were teams out of uh, around up to three, uh, of up to five kids in the team uh, and the trainer, leader or teacher who would uh, motivate the kids and uh, help them. But uh, the kid, uh, kids would have to do the application by themselves. So when uh, we had teams out of kids uh, who were under 10 years old, it was absolutely clear that uh, it was the teacher who made the application. Kids just helped or mm-hmm. they gave some ideas but uh, they were not really those who program. So um, if you want uh, your kid to be effective in programming, I, I would say that uh, when he is seven, eight years old, it's fine if he uh, goes to school or goes to some, again, uh, um, logical classes, but uh, don't overload him with programming. You will have time to sit at the computer and uh, do all the programming he has to if uh, that is uh, where he belongs. Uh, to start from 10 years old would be much better. That is uh, optimal age. It's interesting that uh, Apple's program from uh, kids, they advise to start them from 10 also. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> that's, that, that, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's. Um, We, by the way, we have a comment uh, which is uh, kind of related to my next question. So, uh, so uh, the comment here is that uh, for kids, uh, it might be interesting to develop something with uh, augmented reality, which is kind of like trending right now as a, as a, as the apps themselves. So we have more technologies allowing uh, augmented reality. We have more. Uh, uh, I don't know, more use cases for that, like the, everything uh, is more interactive. And how do you think uh, how you should teach kids development? How it's different from uh, teaching adults? Uh... Uh, as per the augment- augmented reality, uh, I, I would be a bit afraid of that uh, because uh, it makes a kid believe too much. Kids up to nine years old, uh, they believe everything very easily. 
it's fun to play some uh, fairy tales or uh, they would believe in Santa Claus if no one says them different. Um, and that is true. That goes from the heart. So you're so, saying it, Santa Claus does not exist? Yeah, yeah. We, we just need to raise. We need to raise the age rating for this particular episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really <Hard> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you have to get old someday. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so uh, I would be cautious by giving uh, possibility, giving access to augmented reality for the kids. Um, yeah, so that's my point of view, but... Uh, you may try, but uh, then tell me your experience. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, another question you asked. Uh, sorry, what was it about? So how, how we will teach uh, kids the development? How, how it's different from teaching adults? Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, teaching kids is much more fun, really. <laughs> Uh, because there is adults, it's mainly they would come to you and say, oh, I want to earn so much money, like this, by <laughs> much money. I want to have a house. I want my wife to be happy. I want to buy her new, new shoes or anything. And the um, adult person is motivated by money mainly. Mm-hmm. Um, for sure, like if uh, that is a young student who chooses his career, it's uh, it's more it comes more from the possi- from the abilities of the person, uh, and it's interesting to give him new tasks and see how he solves them. But for the kids, it's absolutely different because to make them interested, you would have to come up with some story which would be interesting just for this group of kids. Um, I uh, I can tell you some interesting ideas we had. Uh, we created a story about uh, Harry Potter. Uh, we had a BB-8 robot, uh, you know, the one who who is from the Star Wars, uh, and we we wanted to program it. So what we did um, is um, we brought the the hat. Uh, which would predict the where the kid uh, should go, uh, which category. And uh, I programmed the robot, uh, so when you shake it, it will tell you the uh, the category. So kid would put on the hat, and then he would take the robot, which is also magical, you know, that uh, the, <laughs> the light starts coming out from some circle. Uh, and uh, he would shake it and hear the solution for him. And uh, this all was so magical. We played this story with the little kids, uh, the ones who are after seven and up to nine years. And it was so much fun to see their shining eyes and uh, their beliefs. And uh, they, they truly thought that you are a magician when you put on the hat. Uh, so uh, it is inspiring for the for adult person to see all those stuff. That's why teaching kids a program, if you do it with your soul, but not just by saying instructions, uh, then uh, you can uh, feel that you're an author of some book, <laughs> and uh, you can come up with all the stories, uh, with, with lots of stories, and also start writing your book really. Um, uh, yeah. By the way, you mentioned Scratch a couple of sen- uh, like questions ago. Can you a little bit elaborate what Scratch is and uh, like for those who didn't uh, have a chance to look at it in his uh, childhood? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it is. Uh, <laughs> if uh, auditory is around thirty years, probably didn't have this childhood when they could look into Scratch. <laughs> Uh, so mainly what uh, mm, the, the modern programming uh, looks like uh, putting blocks in some certain order. So you don't really need to write uh, text when you code. You just uh, choose the already written text for you, which is of different colors. So it's much more fun than 
uh, just uh, coloring in into a GID or anything. You know. So um, you would have just to organize those blocks, and uh, that's much it. And I also heard some predictions that in some years, kids who learned to program using Scratch uh, or similar programs. Uh, they would uh, also create programming language like this. And uh, all in all, almost anybody would be able to program whatever they want because it will be so simple. And uh, people, w I mean, uh, customers uh, would have to pay only for products which would be super unique and which would have some not standard functionality. Otherwise, uh, like anybody is a programmer of his life and of his uh, product, which he sells. Right. <clears throat> yeah. yeah um, well, actually, this probably a little bit related to the to the uh, next topic we are going to discuss. But uh, uh, just out of curiosity, did you? Uh, hear about uh, Swift playgrounds and like the Swift language itself and how Apple tries to um, move kids there? I uh, I heard of that, uh, but I didn't try it. If you know some information, <laughs> I would be happy to learn. Yeah, well, pro probably. We, we, so basically just a sm small uh, sidestep here. So the Swift playgrounds on iPad, um, and by the way, they also have something for the Mac as well. But it's basically an application which has uh, Swift lessons. And they are basically start with something similar, like you choose uh, proper things to put there and you start with small language details, basically controlling something on the screen. Like, I don't know, it's you have a lesson. Like Alexandra described yeah. Scratch. So uh, already written pieces of, for example, fu function names and then just chosen right once yeah. in, a, in the right order. But uh, it... I know uh, uh, what I've heard of that uh, is that uh, it's possible to program robots, drones uh, and musical instruments with this uh, thing. Yeah. And uh, it is uh, it sounds cool. And I can tell you more about uh, ways to program this stuff. Yeah, after you finish about Swift, I will say more Yeah, we will definitely want to, to hear that. So I, I was just trying to say that, well, it seems that the ideas are similar and there, there are a lot of things happening in this area, making the development easier for the kids and like basically, uh, I don't know, motivate the kids to learn the development, like show that it's not that hard to start development. And... Uh, basically giving an opportunity to move on with that and uh, like uh, creating new developers earlier. When when I started the development, that was like a long time ago and uh, the computers we, which we had, they like you, you need to use tape cassettes to load something into the computer and like you, you hope that your, uh, uh, the cassette will be like intact for several times and you your programming was also you you have to save that on the cassette and not not the disc not the diskette or something but mm -hmm. rather the, the the cassette and it they were bad actually i mean you you often had something which like jumped the the tape and everything and like there were a lot of problems with that and now it seems to be a little bit easier to <laughs> to start something and uh the, and yeah by the way there were no something like Scratch or uh, Swift Playgrounds at that time, you had to learn basic, which is not a hard language, but you you basically was like put into development di directly. So you, you need to understand it's from, from the scratch. You need like to know how to, how to do everything there. It wasn't too hard, but well, it was fun in terms of like creating something from your own and like seeing how your code controls the computer and like something i don't know like just drawing a line on the screen was so much fun and at the, at the age of six i think or seven that was like ter terrific uh, uh to see that just happening so it's basically like you control that it's not it does something which like it's programmed to but it's like you are in control of that that was that was fun and uh, so, 
yeah l l let's go to your story probably <laughs> like how, how to control the star yeah. uh, yes i agree when when kids start seeing that they program something by themselves uh they they uh, they cry they i mean they they shout that uh, come see what i have done wow um uh, yeah, so what I wanted to tell you, we, it was really fun. Uh, and uh, what I guess is uh, from is related to Swift programming, but not Swift, uh, is again um, the BB-8 programming. Uh, there is very do program, uh, which I would also recommend, uh, as if you want to buy some device, with the help of which you want to see that the program the programming is real. Uh, when we have little kids, uh, we start with um, physical devices. Uh, normally, we would make a first lesson uh, with the robot, and then they can start using Scratch, because um, then they really understand that uh, what they program makes an effect. And when you have a simple computer, uh, where you would uh, have to put some blocks and see that the cat moves, uh, cat is the standard uh, actor for Scratch. Uh, it also is cool, but uh, physical device, the one which you can really touch, is something you would believe much better. Right. So, uh, yeah, if you want to have fun with your little kids, then I would advise you to buy some robot, like uh, VB8. Uh, this is one version. Uh, it works, uh, again, for the smaller kids. Because um, it's fine if you make it move in the water. I've seen some physical exercises. Um, teachers of physics would create uh, some examples how they would use uh, the robots to show the, uh, the nature of objects. For example, if you would put the robot in the water, uh, some uh, little water would be pushed out. And uh, then it's not only about mm, like having uh, something in the water. Uh, it's about making the robot move there. And uh, then you can see that some water gets splashed. And um, you could learn the materials um, by creating uh, a card with a robot. Like you can imagine a circle. Uh, then you can put something around the circle and this uh, material should should go over the water and you would have to count uh, what should be the size of this material depending on how much you want to put on it. For example, um, there was um, uh, an idea to make a robot, uh, a transport robot. So that this uh, circle of VB8, uh, his body, lower part of body, it would move uh, and then it would pull this cart after him, having some stuff over it. Uh, and it is uh, absolutely applicable for the older kids, uh, which are in the seventh grade, let's say, who would learn uh, this kind of physics. Um, <clears throat> so it's, all, it's much better when you can try stuff. Uh, there are lots of ideas uh, on this site. Um, it is Universal Pictures, the company that created uh, Star Wars. So they sell those robots and they are responsible for creating support materials, uh, the ideas of how you can play with this robot, how you can program it and how you can learn with it. So if you want to to know more about it, it's absolutely free information. You can go on their site. Uh, it's available on Google Chrome. Uh, it also can be downloaded for iPhone, for already Mac. Um, so you could connect your uh, computer using um, Bluetooth to the robot and uh, experience uh, programming on uh, on your computer on Mac or not on the Mac. Um, and uh, yeah, it works. Uh, so uh, and you can make this robot shake and, or you can learn uh, how fast it falls depending on some conditions. 
uh, it has sensors to to measure all those stuff. Um, so this is one version which I would advise you, especially if you have little kids uh, and you want to spend time with them by programming. Uh, nice. Then another version which I would advise for the older kids, especially for those who like constructing, it would be Lego Mindstorm. This um, you know, Lego uh, company, they created this Lego Mindstorm robot to also for learning. It has different uh, sensors. For example, you could measure the distance to the object. And um, I, uh, uh, together with my kids, um, with, uh, with the kids in, in our group, we tried to write uh, a, a program for Lego Mindstorm to go collect uh, apples. Uh, for sure, um, it sounds uh, like fun. Uh, what we did um, is we we noticed that in countries like Greece, um, there are some large machines that would uh, go to the tree, uh, put some, um, let's say, blanket around the tree, and then shake it. So when the tree is shaken, uh, olives or apples or any fruit, uh, it would come down to the blanket. And then the machine uh, takes it all uh, away and collects it in the baskets or in the uh, um, in itself. Uh, so we tried to make robot work like this. Uh, the, the idea was uh, to at first for sure to to design the machine so that it would work similarly. Uh, then we built a tree out of uh, play doh, um, and uh, our machine would come sense the tree. There are sensors that can uh, understand the color. Um, so it would sense where is the, the tree, but not the finger. Uh, it would uh, make motors come around the tree and then start shaking. So we made the parody of real life in our little sandbox. And uh, when you start doing it again with the kids, you understand that kid can influence reality. It, uh, like kid would feel that he is adult. And this is the dream of every kid to understand that he, uh, like, to imagine that he is adult and he can do anything what his parents do or what the real, true people right. do. Uh, so this programming it uh, makes kids uh, much happier, <laughs> uh, for sure. If you help them and uh, if you make them, uh, if you give them enough support. Because uh, when kids starts coming across some stuff which uh, he cannot uh, understand, uh, he can drop the programming. But uh, if there is a, a wise adult next to him, then he would uh, stimulate the kid to find out where the truth is or explain what is needed. So it has to be managed uh, by adults. Uh, otherwise, uh, early programming can make negative effects. Um, yeah, and as for the languages, um, for example, Lego Mindstorm, uh, it can work uh, with uh, blocks, uh, which we discussed earlier, and also Java could be used. And you know, Java is adult language, uh, mm -hmm. adult programs are written <laughs> on Java. So this is the early start for, for young programmers. Uh, and... Um, uh, this is mainly, I, I know that there are many other robots which would work with some uh, software written especially for these robots or with uh, some similar software to Spheroidu or to Lego programs. Um, like you can find them on some sites, uh, try to experience if some Chinese uh, products also would work well. I don't have experience with those, but I know that some do work. Um, what I, what else I could advise? Uh, 
uh, as per the programs uh, for the kids uh, is green food and uh, green food is a program created by oracle uh, and uh, for sure it has to do with uh, java <laughs> so um, there you have the actors and the world and uh, this is actually all with what you with what you work so in the world you would deck, uh, you would add sceneries um, and the uh, actors would also be added in the world, like new instances. And um, uh, in another part, where the actor part, you would describe all the possibilities actors would have. And I believe that this kind of uh, mindset uh, forms uh, understanding of uh, object-oriented programming advertised by right. Java, and not only. Um, so if you want to, to make your kid, uh, start real programming, then, uh, you can make it fun with, uh, such, uh, application as, a uh, green food. I know it works nice. on, uh, on computers. Uh, I believe it would be hard to work with it on mobile mm -hmm. devices. So as long as you have Mac, uh, you can download <laughs> it, uh, not on right. the Mac. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's that's a wrap. We 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 we, ta we talked on everything we wanted to, and uh, thank you very much for coming. You showed us the great world of uh, uh, how to teach kids programming and how to influence them in turn make the like this process interesting for them at least and uh, I hope the kids program will grow and uh, there will be more uh, initiatives like that and uh, thank you very much for doing that particular thing it just from uh, like it, it, it's still amazing to, to do a lot of stuff in, for for younger generations and like making them our new uh, developers later on so that's uh, and I, I I hope that's actually like also fun uh, fun process itself. So like uh, working with kids seems to be uh, seems to be interesting. I'm 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 not in in this particular area, but it, at least from, from from if you look from the side, it looks like it's it should it should bring some joy uh, doing that. Yes, yes. With kids, we have to be ready to anything, and it makes <laughs> your mind work much faster than it actually works. So, nice. um, yeah, I would like to advertise uh, being a trainer uh, because we want to involve more kids in this program. We we would be happy if more people become trainers. As long as we are online now, uh, yeah. it's possible to be a trainer from any part of the world as long as you speak a language the kids speak. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we uh, currently we run program in uh, Spain uh or in italy <laughs> sorry <laughs> um and uh, the um, one trainer from belarus um me and uh, one trainer from there uh, so there are three trainers from different places of the world uh, we work for the kids who speak russian uh, so we will be happy if uh, our uh, listeners would become uh, trainers in next parts in next years yeah hope so thank you very much uh <clears throat> thank you for coming and uh for those of our listeners who waited something on wwdc the conference which will uh be soon held by apple yes we will be covering this conference uh next week uh we will not be uh, in two weeks, we'll, our next episode will be next week on June 8th. So be ready. We will be talking about the stuff which was announced by Apple on this particular conference. But today was our special episode devoted to uh, Children's Day. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and uh, tell your friends about our podcast. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Love you, Bye. Keith. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>